Hi, this is J.A. Sorry, a.k.a. Jamie, back again doing a review for the House of Horror. Today I'm going to be reviewing Dead Mate. Um, this was a VHS tape I picked up on a whim. I was just curious about it. I love old 80s cheese. Um, unfortunately, this goes above and beyond cheese to just total Velveeta. Um, to tell you a bit about it, uh, because I looked this stuff up, but now it's here. It's written and directed by Straw Wiseman. I'm not even going to mention the actors because I went and looked and none of them really have any credentials. There's one person that has voiceovers that plays the, the bad husband in this, but I'm going to read you the blurb real quick to start. This review is going to contain spoilers, but this movie is so weird that it's really not going to matter all that much. So without further ado, here we go into the review. Um, the back of the box reads... When Nora married a mortician, she had no idea of the horrors that awaited her. In the back room of the funeral parlor that she now calls home, bizarre, erotic experiments are taking place. Her husband's not letting anyone rest in peace. The body he's, bodies he buries don't stay that way for long because he's got a thing for stiff women, and now Nora's running for her life. All right. Sounds pretty interesting, right? I thought it sounded pretty interesting. So, our tale begins with Nora. And uh, I'm looking to see if it even has her husband's name on here, but I have it pulled up so I can look. Her husband's name is John Henry Cox. I'm sorry, that's my dog coming into the house that you hear. Um, she calls him Henry. So you have Nora and Henry. Nora, the movie starts, and I'm thinking this is going to be fantastic. Gore scene. She's laying on the bed. It looks like a casket. And she's screaming, and there are these gloved hands reaching inside and taking her organs out. And I'm like, yes, some gore already within the first three minutes. This is going to be great. She wakes up. You think, okay, great. She goes to work in this dinky, of course, it's dated 80s outfit. Um, she's a, she works as a waitress in a diner. She goes in to do her job. This creepo selling condoms comes on to her. She's just not in the mood. And then lo and behold, in walks this stranger in a suit and he has his gloves off and he, he tries to, uh, tries to whatever, you know, because I didn't find him all that suave, but obviously she did. And then literally homeboy pulls out a ring and says, let me whisk you away from here. Let me take you away from this life and give you a better one and blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, it's kind of strange, but she's got a cut on her finger. You don't know where it comes from. Okay. She just gets a cut and he goes, my, you're bleeding. And Oh, I am. Everything goes fuzzy. She gets a real big smile on her face. Now, at this point, you can't tell if she's been drugged or not. It, just, it doesn't tell you. She walks around the counter, tells her co-worker, this is the man I'm going to marry. This is Henry. Her co-worker says, oh, all the good ones are always taking hugs. Her and says, are you sure this is what you want to do? Absolutely, she says. So what does she do? Well, she travels with old Henry to his town, and I wish it had the name of the town on here. It doesn't really matter. Let's just call it Creepsville. They travel to their town of Creepsville to his, uh, to the, to the funeral home where he lives, and oddly enough, there is a pastor the way, waiting there, the local sheriff, um, the librarian that works in the town, his weird butler, and I think that's about it. But they're all there to witness the ceremony. This is, I mean, they, they, I guess he just knew that, that he was going to walk into a restaurant and she was going to say yes. So they perform the ceremony. They go upstairs. It's their wedding night. And as she's laying there, he says, stay still. And she goes to touch his face and he says, grabs her hand. I said, stay still. And then it segues into the next scene. Um, and the next scene comes, um, shows it. I'm trying to summarize this movie without, it, it's just strange. Um, she's living in this home. Everybody's very strange. Um, there's an accident with the young girl. She just kind of walks around the town. She just walks up and down the highway and around the town. And um, No, everybody just kind of looks at her funny. Um, you know, they make comments about, you're his new wife because, see, he's a widower. You know, and she's like, well, I didn't know he was married before. And oddly enough, and this is, you know, uh, alarms going off. Um, there's a full wardrobe of clothing that she can wear that fits her perfectly, you know, because ironically enough, she's the size of his deceased wife. So she goes into town meeting around with people. But as, as this happens, there's a wreck and a young teenage girl is killed in the, in the accident. And for some reason that night she wakes up, she hears noises, she goes down to the basement and she sees them and oh i've got to go before this because there's necrophilia even though it's not shown but the two ambulance drivers that collect the body they decide to pull over the side of the road and get them some they did show some tna it's actually just okay so it's not as bad as like necromantic but it's still kind of creepy so 
she goes and she sees them in the basement and they take the girl's clothes off and it's the librarian. It's someone she can't say to, but you can see a bracelet on her hand. It's her husband. It's the sheriff. And it's someone else. And all she can see is their hands massaging this dead woman's body. The uh, husband has gloves on with electrodes in each hand. He puts them on her, tells everyone to step back, and then he electrocutes the dead body for several seconds as she twitches and convulses and la la la. And then when, she's, when he's done, he pulls his hands up and he goes, Okay, everybody, she's safe now. You can't get AIDS from her because she's dead. Yeah. Okay. So, wife goes upstairs because she's afraid he'll find her. He comes upstairs, and she's shaking, and she says, where have you been? And he says, well, I had work to do downstairs. I was down there with so-and-so, whatever. Um, he ends up kissing her, and I'm just sitting there thinking, you do not know where his mouth has been. Things just go from weird to weirder at that point. Um, the girl's brother... That the girl that has died, the, the teenager, he shows up in Weirdville, and he has an idea something's going on. He tries to talk to her, and he tells her they're taking the bodies. He takes her to the crypt where his sister's body is. The body is gone. The girl knows something's going on, and let me tell you, she's a marathon runner because she runs from that cemetery all the way back to the funeral home, and they're nowhere near each other. I mean, she's just, she's just putting it. She's, Forrest Gump has nothing on this chick. So she finally gets back, um, wrestles her way free. She thinks she's going to get away. Um, at this point, she's been in town. She's called for help and assistance from her friend who was at the diner at the beginning of the movie. She climbs into the car, thinks she's rescued, but she's not because her friend's unconscious in the back seat. And there's her old husband, Pooh. And then it shows her on a slab looking up, and they're getting ready to electrocute her, I suppose. And she's like, no, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. And... Yeah, that's about what you're going to get with this movie. There's other random weirdness. Um, at this point, I'm looking, I'm at seven minutes talking about the strange happenings in this. At one point, a guy gets his head cut off, but he shows up later in the movie. There's some strange zombies or something running around in the graveyard when she's there in the crypt. Um, and, and then the guy that gets his head cut off actually starts following her, pursuing her when she's in the hearse on a motorcycle. And uh, his skin starts to peel off until he's left with nothing but kind of like this. See that? Yeah. It just made, it made absolutely no sense. Plot holes galore and just plain. You know, sometimes films are so bad they're good. This one is just so bad it needs to be burned. Um, I would definitely not recommend this movie. I, I'd have to say that this is probably the first movie I wouldn't even give a rating for it's it's that bad i told my husband i said i'm gonna spend the next several hours trying to figure out what the hell was going on he said are you kidding i'm gonna spend the next several hours trying to forget it so there you go um i'm sorry i don't have a better review for you i'm trying to find different unique movies and this is one that i knew no one would have because it is on vhs tape and it's not on dvd and g i wonder why so hopefully next week i'll be back with a better review so thank you for stopping by thank you for watching thank you for commenting and thank you for subscribing hopefully next week i'll come back with the movie that's a little less strange. I suppose I should have known from the like explicit cover what I was getting into, right? Okay, until next week. Um, I will see y'all soon. Bye.